Good morning, Fighting Scots. It's Hannah Maher here again on our Scots Day of Giving. This is our fourth annual Scots Day of Giving on April the 16th. We're so glad to see many of you joining us as we've been kicking off this day. It's 18 hours and 53 minutes as we honor our heritage and traditions here at Monmouth College. And there are so many, so many great things that we can remember and celebrate, especially in a spring like this, even though it's not the typical spring. Uh, normally, I'd be coming to you live in our headquarters of Mellinger Commons, but instead, we are split into the Hollywood squares, as you see in our Zoom conferencing with some alums and faculty of Monmouth College. We're really excited to continue to bring interviews like this to you throughout the day and additional ways that you can engage. We hope you'll find uh, the stories and the questions and the answers uh, exciting and interesting to help fill your day with something positive, something fun as we celebrate together, as all of our Tartan Nation, our Fighting Scots, come together and celebrate Monmouth College today. Um, there are so many ways you can engage with us through our social channels, connecting with your own friends, your fraternity brothers, sorority sisters, uh, teammates, whoever that might be, and uh, sending emails, sending phone calls, texts, doing your own Zoom interviews and meetings with each other. We hope that you'll find an opportunity and take a break to connect. Uh, if you want to visit our site, go to monmouthcollege.edu slash scottsday. There'll be more updates and ways you can connect there. But in the meantime, I would like to go ahead and introduce our panel we have with us here as we talk a little bit about how this current COVID-19 pandemic has been affecting us. A lot of us know if we have students or our teachers ourselves um, that the education piece is not the typical fashion that we would normally be delivering um, the curriculum and education this time of the year. So we have with us a few educators. I'd like to have everyone take a moment and just introduce themselves. We'll start with Michelle. Can you share a little bit more about yourself? Absolutely. Thank you, Hannah. I am Michelle Holshue Simmons, and I'm in my fifth year at Monmouth College in the Educational Studies Department. I'm a former high school English teacher. I was a teacher at Omaha South High School, um, and, uh, and I'm a parent, so I uh, have that perspective as well. Thank you. Keely, how about you? My name is Keely Brinkmeyer, and I graduated last year, and I was an elementary education major, and I actually student taught at United North, where is my first job. Wonderful. And you're teaching the second grade? Yep, second grade. Wonderful. <laughs> All right, Jason, how about you? Yeah, hi, Jason Spring here. Uh, I'm a 1997 graduate of Monmouth College, and uh, I've been in education now for 23 years in the Gelsberg School District. Uh, the past nine years, I've been the principal at Gelsberg High School North, which is our district's alternative high school. And I'm also a parent of, of three children, so I've got a perspective there that I can add as well. So Good. Again, thank you all for taking time out of your day to join us. We really appreciate it. Uh, Michelle, I'm going to jump right in with a few questions to you. How has this experience and move to remote learning been for you and for the Educational Studies Department? Um, thanks, Hannah. Um, so, as um, you know, all of us here know, and any alumni know, face-to-face um, -face and and uh, um, personal interactions with students are really important to to Monmouth College and to the faculty. And so, um, the transition. Uh, halfway through the semester to go from our regular classes to a remote learning environment uh, was a little bit of a shock to the system. Um, we uh, had uh, a couple of weeks to spring break, you know, when we made this decision and, and um, I and uh, Kyle Martin, who is our information, instructional technology um, director, uh, and Marcy Bentema um, helped other faculty to uh, figure out some technology tools. And um, we just made the transition as best we could. Um, our students have been really quite flexible and um, cooperative and, uh, you know, game for this whole situation. Um, we, we all have had to just adapt. And so um, I have um, office hours, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 9 until 10 in Zoom, and I have students showing up just to visit or to ask questions about class. Then I meet with each of my classes um, one hour per week. Normally, of course, it would be more, but um, we do lots of other things electronically through um, either Google Classroom or Moodle. And then when we're in class together through Zoom, that's when we um, discuss 
um, clarify, you know, those sorts of things because um, I'm also recording, video recording some lectures, so some short lectures. So they have, I'm providing lots of um, resources and lots of information in lots of different ways and then we're coming together just once a week. That's actually working out really well. I've been sending surveys periodically to check in with students to see, you know, how are they doing? You know, am I, am I, you know, loading too much work on? Are, you know, the, is the technology working? And I've adjusted in a few ways. Um, but for the most part, students are managing really well. Um, just one way that I had to adjust that I hadn't thought of just this last week was I had assigned a really hefty um, research article in my English language learners class. And uh, when we were discussing it, there was an awful lot of silence. And I thought, mm, I think people hadn't read it. And so I asked and uh, they said, um, we don't have printers and we can't read off the screen. And I thought, ah, I haven't thought of that. Of course, I have everything printed. And so um, I sent, um, I have all the, the articles right here in, in envelopes and I'm sending articles to students, uh, the, the heftier ones, the ones that are more research oriented. So we're all managing, um, but uh, I, I can't say that it's been necessarily snag free this whole time. <laughs> oh, sure. Well, and I know that depending, depending what course load the students have and how many professors they're interacting with and dealing with, there's there's a lot coming at them just the same, yes. and there's a lot that you all have to do for every course mm -hmm. you're involved in. So I know we appreciate both sides of that very much. Mm -hmm. uh, another question of kind of follow on to that. For educational studies, when you normally have students, maybe student teaching and being placed somewhere, how are you guys, you know, handling that right now? Yeah, uh, Dr. Tom Sargent um, has been really um, instrumental in being in contact with the Illinois State Board of Education because we were concerned about our students who were student teaching. Um, fortunately, at Monmouth College, we start our student teaching experiences early in the in January, so they all began right around January second or. January January 3rd when the schools began and so they the students um, got in uh, about eight weeks of student teaching and the law says it needs to be substantial experience and so uh, Tom was in contact with our contact at the Illinois State Board of Education and um, the students were all able to complete their student teaching just with the, the first half of the semester. The other thing that um, I'm sure that Keely will, will shudder when I say the word, but uh, the, the students all have to complete a, um, a performance assessment called the EdTPA. And that is a very substantial um, experience where the students uh, video record themselves teaching um, and they write a lot of reflection and that is a, a state requirement so that is not we do tie it into the Monmouth College requirements but is actually a state requirement for licensure and so they needed to video record and and uh, fortunately I really pushed our students to video record early and all of the students had all of their materials um, and that is not the case for students across the state I've been hearing about students who um, at other institutions who have not gathered all of their material for the NTPA and then their situation is more complicated but fortunately all of our students are fine they all have all of their materials for the NTPA and uh, many of them have already submitted it. So um, it, ours was less complicated than it could have been. That is really good news to hear. And I know your students are probably now thinking, okay, yeah. <laughs> Professor Simmons was bothering us to do that. Now we're really yes. happy we got it done and it paid off. So wonderful. That's good news to hear. Well, Keely, I'll jump down to you. This is your first year, you know, you graduated last May, first year teaching in the classroom kind of full speed. How has this been? for an experience for you. It's probably not what you thought your first year's experience would be. I, I never thought that this is how my first year would go, but it's definitely going to be memorable. Um, if it taught me one thing, it would definitely be that the importance of making the connections with the parents and the students prior to all of this happening. Luckily, I had had all of their contact information and I had um, an electronic way to communicate with them before this. So when it happened, it was kind of unexpected. And so it was nice to have ways to contact them and be in touch with them going forward. Oh, sure. And as a second grade teacher, I think it's got to also be interesting to think about how, how are you taking your course work 
to them remotely? You know, what have you done to, to help the students maintain that pace? Yeah, and at second grade, they are not as capable with technology as maybe sixth or seventh graders. So for us, because we are a rural school district, we actually decided to send packets home because not all of our students had internet access or even the devices to get on to the internet. So um, we break apart the packets by two weeks. And I know that for me, I didn't want to overwhelm my students or my parents. So I broke apart um, my homework kind of day by day. It looks like this. Um, and with that, they didn't have to, it doesn't have to be a full day. Our school for second grade only recommended about a maximum of 90 minutes. So again, kind of reinforcing to the parents that it doesn't have to be all day that we're here for you. We're here to help you, especially if you need anything. Good. Well, and I know as a, a parent, my son is younger, preschool, but it's it's been interesting to see what they've been able to do in sending packets like that home. But I think it, it does make it easier for the parents to help yeah. and handle a little bit. Mm -hmm. Jason, then I come over to you now. You know, you're, as you said, your principal, and so you're kind of looking at this from a couple of different lenses, but uh, what's it been like to see, you know, your entire building go quiet and, and not have people there? It looks like you're in the building right now, but yeah. I'm you're probably alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm alone. Um, and, you know, the, the key to our success is relationships with our students, and, and that's the thing that we miss the most. Uh, my staff is tremendous. They, um, you know, we reach out to kids, um, you know, via, you know, Google Classroom, Google Hangout, Google Meet, Zoom, you know, any way that we can. And our district's number one priority is, you know, the social emotional well-being of our students, you know, and our staff. So, yeah, we're, you know, we're providing them with lessons and activities and things like that. But really, the number one priority is making sure they're okay, you know. And so, and Dr. Asplin, our superintendent, has, you know, reiterated that time and time again that that is priority number one, you know. So, um, as Dr. Simmons said, you know, about, she used the term flexible, you know, our staff has had to be flexible as, as well as our students because, you know, so many of our students, they have younger siblings at home who need to be on doing their schoolwork as well. And that's one of the concerns that we've heard from parents is, you know, parents are now working from home. Um, devices are kind of limited. Um, Wi-Fi can be a little, you know, sketchy when you got so many devices on there. So we've just had to be really flexible. Uh, one of my teachers um, was getting messages from students late, you know, for high school kids are, there can be night owls and was getting messages at 10 or 11 at night in anticipation of our remote learning being kicked off. And so that kind of spurred her to say, she's going to have a Google Hangout at, you know, at 10 p.m. on Thursday nights because those kids are up at that time. So she's had to be flexible and, and it has been, you know, um, it's been neat to see the number of students that will log on, you know, late in the evening, you know, compared to a nine, nine o'clock in the morning. So it's been, it's been weird. We miss the kids. And one neat thing that I, I'll say that's come out of this is I, I don't, you know, when you go to school every day, you know, you kind of get and, you know, you look forward to having some breaks and things like that. But I've had students reach out to me and, and you know, telling us how much they miss us and miss being at school. And, you know, I think that when we come back, uh, when, whenever that is, if that's later this year, if that's next fall, you know, I think kids will have a, you know, a, a better appreciation of school and, you know, being around their friends and teachers. Mm -hmm. I think absolutely. Well, I know you, you talked a little bit too about some of the ways, you know, that your um, staff is connecting with the students and ways you are and, and all the different platforms and technologies and whatnot, you know, and again, we don't know if this is going to be something that we can come back to physically um, for some of these, you know, the public schools. I know Mammoth already kind of made the call to continue remote learning for the rest of the semester, um, but I know not everywhere has gotten that far yet. When is your uh, when does your academic year wrap up for Galesburg North? Yeah, so we go, uh, I think it's May 14th or 16th, something like that. And, uh, you know, so we're on this, you know, shelter in place through the end of April. So I don't know if, you know, May 1st, if we'll be returning or not. I guess that's a wait and see, you know, wait and see thing. Um, one concern that we have is our seniors and, and trying to get them, you know, make sure they have all their classes taken care of. And, uh, you know, the state has come out and, you know, you know we're not going to hold – 
you know, hold harmless on kids and, and, you know, make sure that they're not penalized. And, but it's hard, you know, you know, as Keely said, you know, some kids don't have the internet at home. And so we're doing the same thing. You know, we send some packets on Mondays and, and, you know, do we have certain kids, we call them offline students. And, you know, so just trying to keep up with that, you know, is, you know, I, that, I come back to that term flexible again, you know, you just got to be flexible with it. So, yeah. Absolutely. Well, I know um, Michelle and Jason both, you know, as you're working a lot with the remote teaching side too and in the students, um, well, you all are, but uh, you, you two specifically, what are some tips or advice you would maybe give the students who are kind of experiencing this and, and working through trying to adapt to this kind of new way yeah. of learning? Well, one of the things that I've talked to my students about a, a fair amount is um, staying on a schedule. I think that um, you know, getting up at a, a regular time each day, um, going to bed at a regular time each day, um, and uh, um, going out and exercising each day, I think keeps the students, um, you know, mentally healthy. Um, and um, I think that, that we all benefit from from you know having somewhat of a regular schedule, so that's been one thing that my, I have communicated with my students. Um, they have expressed frustration or uh, you know just difficulty with staying motivated um, and um, you know getting themselves you know going each day and and figuring out their schoolwork because uh, just as you said, Hannah, they have you know work from all of their different classes, but then they often have jobs and, and responsibilities at home. And so, um, you know, putting, trying as much as they can to, you know, keep a regular schedule and putting aside some, um, having some space, some physical space, because a lot of our students, of course, are moving back into their family's home. And so um, it, I have to say, it's been kind of a, a kick to, to Zoom with our students. And I see you know, but what's clearly childhood bedrooms behind them. Um, I have, I'm from Green Bay, Wisconsin originally, and I have several students in my citizenship class who very purposefully sit in front of a, you know, Chicago Bears um, thing or wrap up in a Chicago Bears um, uh, sweatshirt or a blanket or something like that just to, to needle me a little bit. Um, but I had to bring my, my cheese head to class the other day and I put it on just to, to needle them back a little bit with my Packers um, paraphernalia. But um, I do think that um, students are struggling, you know, having to be in that home space again, because um, I've had a lot of students say, you know, they just have so many interruptions, you know, that their siblings are, are in their space, or um, their parents want to talk to them, and they just have to study. I mean, they still have academic work that they have to do. So, so those are some things that I would say is trying to stay on a regular schedule and get outside and exercise, or if they can't get outside, you know, use videos for um, uh, fitness videos and those sorts of things to, to keep themselves active. Mm -hmm. Jason, would you have anything yeah. else to add to that? Sure. Yeah. You know, I'd echo the same things. Um, one thing is that I'd add on there is, you know, we try to tell kids, you know, stay positive. Um, if, if you sit and watch the news all day long, you know, you're, you're hearing about deaths and, and different, you know, new cases of the COVID-19. And so we're trying to, you know, help kids to keep their minds active and not, you know, just watching the news and maybe staying off social media, you know, and, and as Dr. Simmons said, you know, get outside and get active. Also stay connected with your teachers, you know. Um, you know, I, one concern that we've had in, you know, even from pre-K up to 12th grade in District 205 is that school for a lot of kids is, is the positive place in their life. And for some kids, um, that might be the only time they're around a positive adult and having nice things said to them, you know? So we, I, I put out a videos every couple of days, just two minute videos, just to tell the kids, you know, if you need me, you know, here's my email address. Uh, make sure you're staying in contact with your teachers, you know, and, and just, yeah, just, you know, trying to stay positive, stay connected, get outside. You know, the weather's going to start getting nicer here. Today is a little chilly, but, you know, the weekend wasn't too bad except for the rain. But, you know, just, you know, keep their minds active and stay connected. So, Absolutely. Well, on a, a kind of a flip side of that a little bit, Keely, would you say you've got any advice or tips that you would offer parents, uh, especially of those young ones right now, trying to uh, help them help their students in the remote learning? 
Definitely. I would say that you can make learning fun. If it's reading, you could cozy up in a little space and read, or even just going outside and playing like Michelle and Jason said, um, that fresh air is good for them. Um, go noodle is a great way if it's cold out to get online and stay active. Um, there's lots of great free educational resources right now that are offering free subscriptions for parents and students and teachers. So utilize those too. I'll have to say I tried for the first time this weekend to go noodle and I think my Fitbit tracked some exercise for me as I did it with my students. So uh, I, I totally understand there's so many great things out there right now and, and a lot of resources if you look for them. Um, and as you all have said, you know, go outside. We're lucky that this weather is starting to turn and that this is happening in a time, you know, that we can get outside and do some more. Um, there's the, the Heart Hunters movement started actually in Galesburg and has gotten so big and so wide. And I know the college a few weeks back actually made their own Mammoth College Hearts. And so, you know, you can go to our website and find those, print them out, put them on your windows. It's fun to take walks and, and find those things around, you know, your neighborhoods and just one more way to stay active a little bit. Um, so I think also I will ask uh, both uh, Dr. Simmons and Jason here, how are you balancing it yourself with kids of your own who are trying to do this, you know, academics at home, uh, online remotely, and then work yourselves? You still have the, the job component that's not yeah. going away. Yeah. Um, well, like just like you, Hannah, um, we're having to uh, be flexible and and um, get in work in little bits as much as we can. I have. Um, four boys. I have a ninth grader. Uh, his name is Ben. I have a seventh grader. It's David. And then I have twins who are fifth graders, Mark and Alex. Um, and um, my husband also is a professor at the college. He teaches in the classics department. And so um, we uh, are, fortunately, our kids are at an age where they can be pretty independent. Um, but I keep them on a pretty strict schedule. So we, you know, they're certainly sleeping later than they usually would have during the school year, but, um, but I still get them up. I send our dog in to wake them up around, you know, 7.30 or 8 in the morning, and um, uh, she gets a much better reception than I would if I would be going in there trying to rouse them. So they, they're pretty happy to see her. And um, then I, I have them, you know, check their Google Classroom right away, and um, we do a lot of lists at our house, and so um, I have a chart where they have each of their initials at the end, and they mark things off as they've done them. Um, and certainly it's their, their homework, but then we have household chores um, uh, that they need to do. Um, I want them to get outside and to be active, so I have that on there. Um, I want them to, uh, you know, maybe play board games or something like that. I have them do something creative. So we do a lot of lists, and um, when they're occupied, um, I'm off in my corner working, and my husband's off in his corner working, and, and I'm really fortunate that um, the college is allowing us to come into the building. So I'm actually in Wallace Hall right now. Um, and it's really quiet here. Uh, and so I can get away from home and um, do my video recordings for my classes. Um, and uh, I can, can come here to do some work when the kids are at home as well. Um, so, uh, and the other thing is that we use our public library. The Warren County Public Library is great. So with uh, eBooks and audiobooks, and so we've been using those a lot um, because the, all of our kids went through all of the books that they had gotten from the public library within the first few days. And so um, fortunately, the ebook collections are excellent. And so we're using those a lot as well. Yeah, good. Yeah. And uh, so I've got th three children. Um, you know, my, my wife is a teacher also in Galesburg. She's a special education teacher. So, you know, as, as Dr. Simmons said, uh, you know, when, when you're, when, you know, husband and wife are both educators, we spend a lot of time educating other people's children, you know, so my three kids have had to be pretty independent. Um, I, I've got a We've got two boys. Sadler is seven. He's in first grade. And then I have Sawyer, who's 14. He's an eighth grader. And then we have Annika, who's a senior this year. She just turned 18 all over the weekend. She's really independent. So she, and she's taking classes at Carl Sandburg College as well. So she's, 
you know, we don't have to, you know, keep too, too much of an eye on her because she's been able to, you know, take care of her business. And Sadler, my seven-year-old, really neat. Uh, he gets on the Google Hangout at nine in the morning and with about six or seven of his friends and the teachers there. And it's just so fun to watch them interact. And, and uh, you know, when they're, when they're talking and their face pops up on the screen, their friends, you know, ooh and ah and say, oh, look, there's Sadler. And, you know, that's neat. And so, he, you know, we keep an eye on him. He gets his things done. And then we live out in the country and, and on a farm. And, and so we've got farm work to do. So I'll talk about my middle son, Sawyer, who's 14, who just farming is his passion. And, and he's, he's a good student. But now that we've been on this, you know, away from school for three or four weeks now, we're having a hard time getting him out of the tractor. You know, they're getting ready to plant corn and stuff. So to get him to, to log on and do his things has been a, been a challenge. Um, but he, I think late at night, he gets on and does some things, that, you know, but as far as a regular schedule from him, he's up at the crack of dawn and doesn't come in until after dark from doing farm stuff with my brother-in-law. So he, he's the one I'm, if I'm worried about any of them, it would be him, but I know he's a very strong student too. So he'll be fine. So we're just being flexible, you know, and, and just trying to take care of each other. So long gone is the uh you know eight to five work day i think we're all just you, you fit in the, the hours when you can and where you can and um i know it we're yeah flexible is definitely the, the word of the interview today well as we wrap up any final thoughts from anybody that you want to share with those watching I'll start. I'll just say, you know, just, uh, you know, keep, you know, listening to what they're telling us to do with the social distancing and let's get this thing taken care of because there are so many things that, you know, kids are kind of missing out on right now that if we can get this thing to, you know, get it wrapped up that we can, you know, have a, a normal kind of a somewhat normal summer. You know, we've got 4-H and FFA and county fairs and state fairs that kids are looking forward to and I am starting to see some of that come in as those things are being canceled but man if we could all just do our part you know let's get this thing taken care of so we can get back to some normalcy yeah I would I would echo what Jason has said that you know we all are in this together um I uh also want to say that you know we really miss our students. We, we miss um, being in class with them. Uh, it's really lonely here on campus. Um, I walk our dog um, here pretty regularly and um, I miss seeing students. Um, and you know, we just, we live just a few blocks from here. And so uh, Monmouth is really quiet these days. Uh, the town of Monmouth is really quiet because the college students are gone. So we really look forward to having everyone being uh, here again in a few months. I hope that um, in August, the college will be back to normal just as we want it to be. Yeah, and I would say as teachers, as professors, as principals, that we are all here for you, not only the students, but for the parents. We're here to help and you want the best for your children. Well, thanks, everybody. I appreciate all of you joining us. Um, this has been really good. I know as a parent myself, uh, it helps me a little bit at ease uh, on a few things, but I appreciate all the work that you are doing to, you know, balance remote teaching, remote learning for your students, and, and everything else right now. Um, it's been a great day so far, and we still have several hours in front of us as we continue our fourth annual Scott's Day of Giving, April the 16th here, a full hour, a full 18 hours and 53 minutes um, for our day and uh, biggest virtual alumni and friends event that we can make it. So please join in and participate and uh, make that a reality as we get Tartan Nation um, engaged across the country. There's a lot of good you can do as you share in and listen to our interviews and our stories, share your own experiences right now. Send some positive vibes to uh, your fellow Scots, to our students, um, maybe even share your memories and your photos right now today. Um, use our social channels or visit our website, monmouthcollege.edu slash scottsday and uh, join in on all the fun. So we look forward to bringing you more updates throughout the day, more live updates from myself as well, and, and interviews we have with other alumni, faculty, and staff. Thanks again for all of you for joining us, and we'll see everyone back here in a little while. <laughs>